This video will cover the security models for the child protection and gender-based violence modules of Progress V4. In this video, we will explain how security access works in Progress V4. We will understand how access to the legal protection cases differ from child protection and GBV cases. And we will describe the different security rules for child protection and GBV modules in Progress V4. To start, how does security access work in Progress V4? So the security model is implemented in Progress V4 is aligned with all UNHCR processes. So in all policies and any other agreements, we have designed the module to align to those. Progress V4 users are granted access to records within their business unit based upon the security profiles attributed to them. So these profiles will allow you to access certain other modules as well as certain content within each of these modules. The combination of these different profiles will then be your user access. Users may require more than one profile depending upon their functions and responsibilities within the business unit. If you are working within a business unit for multiple modules, so child protection and GBV, it's possible that you will need a profile for both the child protection module and as well for the gender-based violence module. It's also possible that there's required for different uh, profiles based upon your roles. So if you are responsible for both the monitoring as well as case management, that might also require you to have more than one profile. Based upon the privileges granted, users will only view data and update data and perform various actions based upon that. Taking a combination of your profile as well as what different information you would need access to, each individual when they sign in will have access based purely upon that. And so you will not be able to see anything that you are not granted privileges to see. Perhaps you can see certain things, but you maybe aren't able to update them. So depending upon the configuration of your security profile, that will determine what you are able to see and what actions you are able to take. Security in the legal and physical protection modules goes like this. Everyone with access to that module can see all of the incidents, all of the assessments, and all of the interventions according to their access team. So basically by being a member of the LPP team, you will be able to see all of the cases that are being worked on by the LPP team. The amount of access you can have to them in terms of what you can do to those will vary whether you are a reader, meaning you can just see information or whether you can make changes to those incidents or assessments will vary, but everybody will be able to access those files. And it's not according to the sensitivity of the record, meaning that whatever your role is, reader or basic, you will be able to do the same thing to all of the files included in the LPP module. So if you were to enter a gender-based violence incident into the LP module, everybody who has access to the LP module will be able to see that incident. There are no cases that bring together the incidents, assessments, and interventions in LP. So unlike we've talked about previously with GBV or with child protection, how there's that case that encompasses then the different parts of it, the entities like the incident, the assessment, the intervention. One individual can have an incident, can have an assessment, can have an intervention. They're not all linked together by a case though. Each one is independent. You can link them together, but they're not all held within one case. And there is no workflow in LPP module, unlike with GBV or child protection, where you could see this is pending, it's now in process, it's now closed. That workflow doesn't exist. The same reason why like, there's no case, right? There's just the incidents and the assessments and the interventions. So there's no flow that you move from this to this to this within a case. It's just you have the individual entities that you can work on. So the records can be closed or ongoing. Each of those individual the incidents or assessments or interventions, but there is no overall case workflow. So looking at the setup that we just described for the legal protection module, 
You might notice from what we previously discussed in other videos that this is not how security is set up for the child protection or the GBV case management. And one of the major things you might think about why this doesn't work is that there are a lot of people who are going to have access to lots of cases that they might not need to actually have access to. Just by being in a group, you will have access to cases that you aren't actually working on. And this does not work for child protection and for GBV because of a few of our guiding principles. In child protection and GBV security, we have based this or developed this upon the guiding principles for these sectors. The first and the most important in terms of how our security is set up is this concept of the need to know principle. Access should only be granted to people working directly on child protection or GBV cases. So if I am not providing services to a child protection case or playing a part in the case management of that case, I should not have access to that case. The same thing being for GBV. The other thing that's unique to the child protection and GBV security models is this concept of individual accountability. This means that a user owns their case and only they can see that case and those who it is explicitly shared with. So I can see it as the individual who has created that case. I am the caseworker. My supervisor can see it because they are responsible for overseeing my quality of work and then I can share it with others for a specific purpose. But at the end of the day, this remains my case and I am the only one that will be able to see the entirety of the case unless I was to share it or I was to transfer it to someone else for some ownership. See the video on sharing and transferring for a further uh, description of what that means. So supervision is allowed as part of the security models for child protection and GBV. And what this means is that a caseworker who is working on a case will is supervised by someone or a role named a case manager. And the case manager will be able to review and to provide feedback on all those individuals that they are supervising. This will be described later in this video on how we designate who is the caseworker and who is the case manager. Oversight. Some users, such as super users, monitors, supervisors, can see more cases, but these individuals should be very few, if any. Super user and monitors are not required positions and so should be minimized if they exist at all. We've started to discuss a little bit about the titles of the, these user profiles, but we're going to go through now and explain what is each profile. So working from left to right, the protection case reader, this is a new role that we have developed and it is intended to allow for individuals not in the child protection or GBV unit to identify if a child protection or GBV case exists. Normally this would be someone you might think at a protection desk or at a registration desk. And what this would allow is it would allow for someone to search within an individual. And if they were given this role, they could see that there is an ID for a case and who owns that case, nothing else. So only thing that they would be able to do with this information would be to follow up with the appropriate caseworker to then ensure that either to let them know that an individual has arrived asking a question about the case or to allow them to refer this individual who has arrived, the POC, to then the appropriate caseworker to follow up on their query. This is intended only for visibility of cases um, and for referral and communication, not for any work to be directly done on the case by that protection case reader. The next role is the child protection or GBV case reader. Now this is someone who is not normally a child protection or GBV worker, but who will periodically have to do specific work on a case. Now, one good example of this would be 
someone who's working on resettlement. Now the resettlement caseworker, they're not going to be creating their own GBV cases. They will specifically have access to a case when someone is moving forward towards resettlement. And so what would happen is you could grant someone like this, this profile, a child protection or GBV case reader. And when they are working on a resettlement case, they can then ask the caseworker for this GBV case for access to the case to then utilize the assessment or the BID in a child protection case as part of their resettlement case. And because they now have this role, they would be granted access to read the case and utilize it as they needed for their processing. They cannot create a GBV case, they cannot create a child protection case, but they can have access to a case when it is explicitly shared to them by the caseworker who owns that case. The next profile is a caseworker. A caseworker is what we were talking about in terms of that individual accountability. Caseworkers are the individuals who will be creating child protection or GBV cases. They are going to be playing a direct role in that case management, either creating the case to then refer it on to a partner organization or actually be the one providing that case management over the case management process. A caseworker has the ability to read and write on all of their cases, meaning that they have access to all information within the case file of the individual that they are providing the service for because they would need that type of information to be able to provide the services sufficiently. But they only have access to those cases that they create. So if I'm one caseworker working with another caseworker, I can only see my cases and the other caseworker can only see the cases that they create. Now the case manager is envisioned as the individual who supervises the caseworkers. So a case manager has the ability, all of the functionality of a caseworker. So as a case manager, I can create a GBV case or a child protection case. I can do all of the necessary steps. I can create a BID, I can create an assessment. But in addition to being able to see all of my cases that I have created, I also have the ability to see the cases of those caseworkers who I supervise. And this allows me to review assessments before action is taken on them if necessary, be able to review a case before a case is closed. If one of my caseworkers requests me to review a BID, I can go ahead and I can do that as well. And I have the ability to also write. So I can then add in notes to that case file as well. This is intended to allow for me to fulfill my supervision, whether or not my caseworker is in the same location as me or if I am supervising them remotely. The next two roles are broader roles. This monitor is intended to allow for quality data as well as analysis. And so a monitor role has the ability to read only all of the cases that are either within the business unit in that module or for UNHCR only, if it's a UNHCR only monitor. So all of the cases that are included in a UNHCR's cases, or if it's a partner, there could be a partner only monitor, meaning partners monitor can see all of the cases within that partner. Now, it's important to note that while a monitor has the ability to see all of the cases, they cannot see all of the fields within those cases. So the identifiable information such as name, address, and phone number, and these type of things are not visible to the monitor. The purpose of the monitor role is to allow someone the ability to generate statistics, aggregate statistics from the V4 data. It also allows for someone to be able to go in and do quality assurance on the data without having to see all of that identifiable information. As the monitor, my job is to ensure the quality of the data that is being collected in V4. I am not allowed to write. So if I was to find 
errors in the data, I would have to communicate with the owner of that case to, to have them update the information to correct those errors. And finally, there's the super user. The purpose of the super user is an administrative role only. The idea being this individual has the ability to see all records and all fields within the records in a business unit for the child protection module or for the GBD module. Now, this is not to allow for one individual to be able to see and to follow up and to oversight on all the records. The purpose of this is to allow for transferring of records between individuals or agencies. So if a partner happened to leave unexpectedly and if there was no one who had access to all of those records, that would be referred to as an orphaned record, meaning that there no longer is anyone who owns that record. And so there needs to be some position who are profile that is able to still access that record and to transfer it then to a new owner. That is the main purpose of the super user. The same with the new NHCR. So if you were to have a staff member who unexpectedly left and didn't have a casework or a case manager, then you would need someone such as the super user who would be able to then transfer those cases to a new owner so that the files can be accessed and worked on by the new caseworker who has been assigned to those cases. That is the functionality and the purpose of the super user position. Unique to the child protection and the GBV modules is a concept called positions. So while most of the different modules have different profiles so that you have the ability to read or to the write, in addition to those, the GBV and the child protection modules have a hierarchy functionality, which means that your access will be defined by where you sit in the hierarchy. And so this is important to know for when you set up your module for child protection or for GBV, in addition to just designating their role, you also need to designate their team or their location. So for example, if I was working in Malaysia, I would need to designate whether this person was a caseworker or a case manager. And then I would also need to designate their team or their location. So are they UNHCR Penang? Are they UNHCR Kuala Lumpur? Are they ICMC, an example organization in Kuala Lumpur? I would need to identify both of these things. This is different than what you will see with all of the other modules. So when you put these together, it would create the position of that individual. So this individual would be a caseworker at UNHCR Kuala Lumpur. What this looks like when you set up your V4 is you will be filling out a matrix where you would indicate for each individual, their business unit, the module they would have access to, their role that they are assigned. And remember, it's very important to keep in mind that the your role is the role that we have as a user profile. It does not always align with their title, their job title. So the role here is going to be a caseworker or a case manager. You would then need to designate the organization. So what organization they sit within, are they with UNHCR or are they with a partner organization? That's their position team and location. So are they in Penang? Are they in Kuala Lumpur? The combination of these then gives us the parent position. So for this first individual, their user access rights, once we've outlined each of these positions, is going to be Malaysia, Child Protection Caseworker, UNHCR Penang. That's their position. So in practice, what does this look like? If I'm looking at field team one here, that has a case manager and a case worker and two case workers. Each case worker, again, will be able to see the cases that they have created and that they are working on. The case manager above them can automatically see the files of those case workers that have been identified in that previous matrix to report to them. The case manager can also reassign the files of those case workers. So if one case worker has left, the case manager has the ability to reassign 
the file from this caseworker to the other caseworker. A caseworker can also share the case file with another caseworker, but that has to be explicitly done. It doesn't happen automatically. You can have up to three levels of supervision, meaning you have the caseworker at the first level, the case manager at the second level, and then there can be another case manager above that case manager. So the top case manager will be able to see the files from the case manager that they supervise, as well as the files for the case workers that that person supervises. But it's important to know that top case manager can only read the files of two below. So the person you are directly supervising, you can read and write, but if you are able to access the files of those being supervised by your supervisee, that is going to be read only. So you can have two case managers for the same case workers. So in this example, I've now added a second case manager. So we have two case managers supervising the same case workers. And so each of these case managers can see all the files from both of the case workers, but any file that they create or any case that they create themselves will only be visible to themselves. So the only person who would be able to see both of those case files would be the case manager from the branch office. Now, looking at this then, then you have the monitor who would be able to see all of these case files as we had mentioned before, but not in all detail. They would not be able to see the identifiable information and they would not be able to see the text boxes. The only thing they are able to see is that information that would be used for statistical analysis and they will then be able to see that to allow for them to identify issues with quality assurance as well as to do analysis. They are not able to write on any of these files, so if they were to find an error, they would still have to communicate with the owner of that case file to allow for the information to be modified. And the super user can see everything and reassign cases at will, but they are not able to write on the files. So that is what access looks like within UNHCR. But as we know, it's our child protection and our GBV partners who are doing much of our case management. And so a few key things to know about the access that our partners will have. Partners do not have automatic access to individual records in the registration module. Meaning if someone who is a partner wanted to go and to create a new child protection or GBV case, they are not going to be able to go into the registration module and find that individual. They would have to tell you who the individual is they want to create a case for, and then that individual's record has to be shared with the partner first and then they can go ahead and create the file. This is something that's very important to consider when you are doing your initial deployment of V4 and needs to be discussed about how this will be addressed. Who would be responsible for granting them access? And this will also be dependent upon and determined by caseloads and how much work this would actually take. As part of the deployment, you will go ahead and you will create the setup for each partner with prime support once it's been discussed about how this will work moving forward. So looking at the organogram or the hierarchy then with the partner is it looks like this. So you have a case manager, case worker, so UNHCR is on the left hand side here. Then you see after a small partition, you also then have the partner hierarchy. So there's the case workers that exist and then the case managers. There is a unique position to partners that's called a partner supervisor. This is similar to our super user role, but it is only accessing the partner information. So that partner supervisor has the ability to read all of the case files within the partner organization. The same rules apply to the caseworker and to the case manager as they do within the UNHCR rules. The caseworkers have the ability to share a case between them, but they have to do that manually. It does not happen automatically. But a caseworker's files will be automatically shared or visible to their case manager. 
a caseworker from UNHCR has the ability to share a case file with a caseworker from a partner with no problem. They also have the ability to transfer a file if necessary. A case manager has the ability to also transfer a file to the partner supervisor of a partner and then that partner supervisor can then reassign that file to anyone in the partner organization. You'll notice above floating, we have the super user, which has access to all of the files within that business unit for that module. And then you'll notice that I have the monitor role here, but there's actually three options for the monitor role. So these won't all exist together, but there's, I wanted to show that there are three options. There is the original one that we had discussed right next to the super user called the UNHCR monitor. This monitor role would be able to access all of the files across both the partner and UNHCR. And again, as read only and not the identifiable information or the text boxes. But in some situations, this is not appropriate, nor do the partners prefer this setup. And so there are some other options. There is the ability to have a partner monitor. So a monitor that the partner can use to do their quality assurance and their analysis just for the partner data. And then there can be a UNHCR only monitor. So that UNHCR monitor would be able to do the same thing for the UNHCR files. So basically, if you were not to have a UNHCR monitor, you could have the two monitors below. And so the partner would be responsible for their quality assurance, the UNHCR would be responsible for their quality assurance. And then between that, you would know that all of the case files in terms of the quality assurance would be managed by one of those two monitors. It's also possible now to have a service unit. So if you want to identify that for this partner, this case manager that I've just covered with the green box has three case workers and they are part of this specific service unit or a UNHCR has service unit. When we say service unit, what we mean, they group together particular case workers or case managers and cases that are owned or shared within the service unit are visible to everyone in the service unit. Now, this is very important that this is used keeping in mind the need to know principle. Services are advisable for archiving old cases, cases in particular locations that need to be accessed by different caseworkers. For example, if you happen to be in a detention, working in a detention center where it won't always be the same caseworker who is going and doing the check-in or who um, in residential centers, then it might be necessary for multiple caseworkers to have access to the same case. And in that situation, a service unit would be more appropriate. Or a broker case management files where there's only a limited amount of information that is stored in the case file. So basically that you have received an individual and then you have referred them to a partner. So you're not documenting all of the details of that individual. It's really just a recognition that there was a case created and then that case has been referred on to a partner for the actual case management. And in that case, it might be useful for everyone in the service unit to know that that case exists so that if someone was to ask a question about it, you would be able to know when the case arrived and that sort of thing. But it's very important to use these with discretion because service units are not advisable for wide use as they affect the system's performance and they can really violate the need to know principle. This should not be used just so that everybody can have access. There needs to be a very specific purpose to why a service unit is created. So the key messages to keep in mind are that cases should be owned by caseworkers and shared with others on the basis of the need to know principle. Roles are assigned according to function, not to title, meaning you might have a different name in your title, but you are assigned the role of caseworker or case manager It's not always a line. By using different combinations of the user roles, there are flexible options for different operations in terms of security setup. And so instead of just giving people higher level of access, it's important to ask prime support and your technical support um, focal points to figure out what is the best way to configure roles to give people the access they need, but not extra. 
And UNHCR will have to agree appropriate access to with partners to their information. This, just because we've built a system does not mean now we have access to all of our partners' information. It is important that we also keep that need to know principle in mind when thinking about what our access is to our partners' information and what is the purpose of us accessing that information and building the profiles based upon that. Thank you very much.